There you are. I've been waiting for you. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot. And this is Tuesday. It is August 29th. Now, in all my shows, we do the same thing. We go looking for hot OTC and penny stocks. We're looking for stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. Now, when I go looking for stocks that have potential, unlike most people, I don't go bothering with the news and the filings. Not initially. I go to the charts first. I look for charts that look like they're about ready to run. Maybe there's a breakout setup or a lot of volume coming in. Just something that gives me an inclination that this chart wants to move. When I find a chart like that, then I go rummaging around through the press releases and the filings looking for a catalyst, for a match to set that chart on fire. Well, I've got three of those stocks I want to share with you today. First stock we're going to take a look at is ticker DTII, Defense Technologies International. Now, the chart's looking pretty decent. Our four-hour chart's a little weak. She is way underneath the 200, but she's sitting right on top of the 50 after a nice run up and a hard come back down. But the one-hour chart is looking a lot better. She's had a lot of news here recently, and it is relevant because this company isn't making any money, and the news is talking about revenues that are just about ready to start coming in. So now would be a good time to look at DTII, especially after that fall. Could be a buying opportunity now. DTII finished today at 0.0225, two and a quarter cents, with a huge fall on the back half of the day of almost 27%. She's on the pink tier, and she is current. She's got a transfer agent verified, but we don't see the verified profile down here. Those are the two ticks we're always looking for, especially with a pink. The problem with OTC stocks is you don't get a lot of information. The problem with the pinks is you get no validated information. These two green ticks are virtually the only validated information we get, so it really behooves you to look for them. Now, I'm surprised to see they've got independent directors, which is a good thing. Independent directors listed over here tells us they have plans of uplisting. I don't know any other reason to have independent directors listed here. So I haven't read anything, but that's what it looks like. So what does DTII do? Well, they primarily run their operations through one subsidiary called Passive Security Scan. They have an exclusive worldwide license to manufacture and distribute it. The company launched its first product, adding a camera to its screening device. Now they've got three different types of portals. One of their portals just screens for weapons. A second portal they have screens for weapons and elevated body temperatures. So you can be checking people for COVID and things like that. And their third portal screens just for elevated body temperatures. The passive security scan is a portable scanning security device that uses the Earth's magnetic fields to detect potential security threats rather than the radiated x-rays everybody else is using. It is the only product of its kind that uses passive scanning. When students step through the passive security scan, sensors embedded within the aluminum frame alert security personnel to the level of threat with color-coded LED lights and an audible buzz. The passive security scan can also be linked with a computer to give an instant view using numbers or colors of the threat area, which can then be transmitted to a handheld device for ease of use, threat tracking, and neutralizing. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Yay, she's gone up. We are up about 600%, jumping from 55,000 up to 318,000 today. Taking a look at the company share structure. Whoa, that is beautiful. We've got a super duper small float. Outstanding share count is only 2.6 million. Subtract what the insiders own, a meager 208,000. That leaves us 2.4 million. If these numbers are correct, we've got ourselves an excellent, very, very small float. Financials for DTII. We have nothing on the annual and we've got nothing on the quarterly. But the news gives us hope that it is just around the corner. Looking at the disclosures for the company. We've got two recent filings here, one on the 25th and one on the 24th. Uh, This one is the 10K amended. They brought out their annual report on the 15th. There was something not right in it, so they amended it. That just came out on the 25th. And then this 8K correlates to the news. So looking at the news, we have gone back to June 7th here. 
Now, we're only going to headline this because it pretty much tells us what we need to know. On June 7th, the company signed Safer School Technologies as a distributor for the state of Texas. On June 20th, the company presents the Passive Portal at the 2023 Georgia School Safety and Homeland Security Conference. Now they go abroad. They are moving outside of the United States. DTII expands and signs PT Lab Seist Matica Indonesia as a distributor for Southeast Asia. And two days later, they are sending them portals. That's how fast that deal was. They've actually sent their very first shipment out. So that tells us money is about ready to start coming in. And then the last piece of news that came out today, another deal. The company signs Vira Exit Technologies as a distributor, again, for the state of Texas. So we've got them in Southeast Asia, that is Singapore. We've got two of them in Texas, and it looks like we might be getting one in Georgia. And they are just getting the game going. The chart is showing signs of getting ready to run. Even though she had a hard back half of the day, I still think she's got love to pass around. Let me show you what I'm talking about. We're going to chart these stocks on my free trading platform. This is Think or Swim. You get it when you sign up with TD Ameritrade, and that doesn't cost you anything either. So we are looking at Defense Technologies International, ticker DTII. This is a one-year, one-day chart. Our 52-week high is $1.15 back on September 9th, and our 52-week low is just over a penny and a half. That was at the start of July. Coming down to our six-month, four-hour view, about five months ago, we hit a high of $0.75, cents, starting at $0.13. Cents. That was a 500% run and then a 500% drop. She came right back down to where she started from. Then she dipped a little bit more, and she has been laying on this 200-day haul for a very long time. I've been pointing this out to you a lot here recently. The 200-day haul is a lot like your 200-day SMA. It takes 200 days of prices, averages them all together, and then puts more credence on current prices. So you end up with a line that is closer to the price. And penny stocks have been paying a lot of heed to the 200-day haul. So after she hit her low, it didn't much change anything. She just bounced back up to the 20 and continued her descent. And it was about four or five days ago, she got antsy. She broke out from about two cents and ran up here to just over five cents. That is a 150% gain right there. She came back down. She was laying here for a couple days and today she took a drop, about 27% falling down to 2.2 cents, and she is right on top of the 50 and the 20 right now. Oscillators were strong, but as you can see, they're all starting to pull back a little bit because of that huge fall we had this afternoon. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view, well, you can see there is not a lot of trading here. These white lines here, that's a full day. So we have one bar, one hour of trading on each day here. Here we had three hours of trading four hours of trading. Here we've got a half a day of trading and now we've got a lot more trading. So you can see there is more activity building up in this stock. Once she broke out here, she went over her 50, big bar, lots of excitement, zoom straight to the 200. Look at that jump, that bounce. Pushed herself through the 200, came back down, not any lower than where she started, right here, the halfway point, beautiful. She did dip back down. That's okay. This is our token sign that says, I'm looking for an opportunity to run. So it's not ready yet. It's still too steep. So she comes back down and she is waiting for this to level off. Now, I think she's in a position here to push up and take advantage of it. Oscillators say the opposite. <laughs> They say she is still falling. She could come back down to that 200 haul. She's been paying a lot of respect to it. All of our oscillators right now are still dipping. Five day, five minute. Lots of volatility here. There's that low bubble of two cents, high bubble of 5.2 cents, and she came right back down, but not as low. She is close, but she's not all the way down. But she could come to this point the way she's looking. Oscillators say she is still falling. So our low here is two cents. I would watch for it to bounce off of that. Honestly, I would look for the bounce here. 
the bounce would be a perfect place to get some of your position. If you like this stock, if you think it's got something going for it, get like 25, 30% of your holdings. If she dips, you can buy some more cheaper. If she starts to climb, we'll get the rest of what you want. But don't hang around too long. These bounces don't last long. DTII. Put it on your watch list, folks. She looks sad, but I think she is crouching like a cat getting ready to pounce. Next stock we're taking a look at has a lot going for it. This is Keiko, ticker CACO, Caravelle International Group. Now her chart, it's outstanding. It is an atypical breakout chart that virtually has every token sign that I'm looking for. And she's got a variety of good news. She just had financials here recently. They were really good. And they just had news come out today. The company was out of compliance with the NASDAQ. They were in hot water. Today they came out with news saying they are back in graces with the NASDAQ. So everything is looking good for Keiko. She finished the day at 68 cents with almost 26% gains. She is on the NASDAQ, so you're going to be able to trade this for free. No transaction fees with major exchange stocks. And you're going to be able to trade it pre-market, after-market. You don't get to do that with OTC stocks. Now they tell us here that she is a shell company. That means that she hasn't got any business, so they're not making any money. Well, I don't know why that's up there. They've just released financials. There was money on the books, and they've got business. So I don't know what the heck that's doing up there. So what exactly is their business? Well, they tell us here that Caravelle is a global ocean technology company. Its business comprises of two sectors. Their traditional business, which is international shipping by sea, and the new Kotec wood desiccation business. The international shipping has traditionally generated all the revenues, but now they've got this new Kotec business. It is a new development building upon the existing shipping business. It enables wood drying during the shipping process with full utilization of shipping time, space, and the waste heat of the exhaust gas coming from the shipping vessels. Caravelle's Kotec industry is headquartered in Singapore. So they take this wood, fresh cut, and they load it onto the ship into an area where the exhaust from the ship is coming in, so it's very hot, and it dries all that wood. So by the time it gets to the United States, which is where they're sending it, it's dry. Well, that saves them time, that saves them money. It is a very smart process. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Yes! Look at that explosion. I can't even calculate this, folks. We went from just under 29,000 shares to 1.4 million. I think that's something like 45 times her normal volume, if my brain is working fast enough. Share structure for Keiko. Had to go look this up. I don't know why it's not listed here. They tell us that the outstanding share count is about 52 million, and they say the float is 50 million which isn't a bad float. Not low, but it's not a bad float. Looking at her financials, we got no information over here. But don't worry, I found a press release which has got all the information in it. As you can see, they are making money. They're not a shell company. They tell us that their revenues for 2022 were $185 million. Does that sound like a shell company to you? The year before, they were at $122 million. So between 2021 and 22, they jumped $60 million. Caravelle earned $12.2 million in 2022 compared to 5.3 in 21. And earnings per share jumped from 11 cents in 2021 to 24 cents in 2022. Despite the great performance in fiscal 2022, the global shipping industry is facing challenges in 2023, remarked the CEO. However, we are optimistic about the future. Later this year, Caravelle anticipates launching its Kotec wood drying in transit and commencing the export of wood products from Gabon, Africa into the U.S. duty-free. Both new ventures are valued as profitable opportunities and are expected to grow at a very fast rate. We expect these high margin opportunities to more than offset any continued weakness in our shipping business. Caravelle ended the year with a strong balance sheet, including $21.6 million in cash, as compared to only $10.5 million at the end of 2021. 
Additionally, the company reported net cash inflow from operations of $33.1 million in 2022, a significant increase from a half a million reported in 2021. Taking a look at those disclosures for the company. We don't have anything here since February. So really all we've got is the news and we've really talked about it already. We had our financial results and we have them regaining compliance. So everything is good for the company. They are making strong revenues. They are making profits. They are giving us shareholder value. Let's go take a look at that chart. We got Keiko up. Let's chart it. This is ticker CACO. That is a six month, four hour chart, and it's actually all the chart. This is her very first day on the market, December 19th, when she hit a high of $9.36, fell all the way down here to a dollar. And from there, she has slowly been drooping until she hit this low of 44 cents at the end of June. Now, when she hit that low, she changed her trend. She's done falling fast and furious. She is now growing slow and steady. She jumped up over that 50-day SMA, showing a lot of eagerness to get to the 200. And she has been floating on that 50-day SMA right to the 200, where she finally broke out, jumping from 57 cents up to 80 cents, and then falling back to 64 cents, which is sitting on top of the 9-day SMA, above the 200-day SMA, with the 50 and the 20 just about ready to cross the 200. That's going to give us two golden crosses, some power and some oomph. As you can see, the volume is coming very strong and our oscillators, surprisingly with all this downfall, are showing a lot of strength. Our PPO is pushing up right now. Our MACD is pushing up. Our RSI is starting to climb. Everything looks pretty good. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view, so she's going sideways here, slowly climbing, taking a little dip under the 200. And then she took off here, bouncing off of this low bubble of 51 cents up to that 80 cents and falling back down. Everything is lined up nicely. We do have a roly-poly nine day here, but she is sitting on top of her 20. Our oscillators, they're showing a little bit of weakness now. Our PPO was pulling back a little bit, as is our MACD, which has had a negative crossover but our RSI is actually pushing up. Five day, five minute. So what do we got here? She's on top of her 50, took a dip for that low, came back up on her 50 and lost it. And now she's been paying heed to the 200. All of her respect is on that 200 and the 50 has come down to meet it. Right now, all of our SMAs are in one big knot right here and the price is sitting on top of them all. Our oscillators are a bit mixed up. Looks like they're trying to recover right at this very moment. Everything was falling, has come up, and is sitting right there at even Steven. So I would keep my eye on Keiko. She's got good news. She's gotten compliant. She's making revenues contrary to their shell. And the chart is in the midst of a breakout. I would put it on my watch list. You're going to be upset if she jumps. <laughs> he didn't. Last ticker we're taking a look at also comes from the major exchange. This is Bit Origin Limited, ticker BTOG. Now, this is a Bitcoin mining company that's doing very well right now, making millions of dollars, getting lots of coins. Now, companies like this really don't have revenues. They have assets. They're not making products, selling them to customers. They're just doing mining, but they're doing very well. And I'm expecting the cryptocurrency market to do a lot better from this point forward. If you're unaware of this, folks, America is going crypto. No, not in the future. Right now. They have already sent out the Fed Now coin to the banks and to a lot of big corporations. And then you and I, the consumers, are going to get the Fed coin. That is just around the corner. They are right now pulling paper money and change out of the economy. And because of that... I think that the crypto market is going to be growing. That's a validation. If America is going crypto, how bad can crypto be? Now, the company has got a great chart. It has been flying high, but it crashed the other day. Came down yesterday and slammed into the 200, but it looked like it could bounce. Well, looking at the charts, it looked like it did. BTOG, she finished the day at $1.99 with just over 17% gains. Now, I told you the company mines Bitcoin. 
but let me give you a little more information about where they are and what they're doing. As of July 31st, 2023, the company has one hosting mining site in operation and one mining site under development. The company ceased its operation in the mining facility in Georgia December of last year. Now the site they are operating right now is in Marion, Indiana. It is a 5.3 megawatt facility. They have 4,250 miners. These are computers. That's all they are is tough, strong computers that are working on mathematical problems. And when they crack the mathematical problem and get the answer, da ding they get themselves a coin. And all of their miners are in Indiana right now. Now the site they are developing, that one is in Cheyenne, Wyoming. And I want you to notice how much bigger this one is. They tell us here it's a 45 megawatt. Well, that's phase one. Phase two, they're adding another 25. They tell us it's going to be a total of 75 megawatts. Well, with this 5.3 megawatt facility, they're doing millions of dollars every few months. So what is this one going to do? On June 15th, 2022, the company announced that it had entered into a set of definitive agreements with a private cryptocurrency mining investment fund in Wyoming, U.S. with a capacity of 75 megawatts. Phase one of the project of capacity of up to 45 megawatts for mining facility in Wyoming was energized March 2023. So they just got it up and running. And the phase two of the 25 megawatt is undergoing engineering design process currently. Now, the name of the company originally was China Exante Food Company, and now they have their new name, Bit Origin Limited. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Now, I know that doesn't look too good, but it really isn't that bad. She jumped from about 16,000 shares up to 116,000 shares. No, not very impressive numbers, I agree, but calculate it. That is over a 700% increase in volume. Sometimes it isn't about the volume itself, but about the extra attention being paid to it. Share structure for bid origin? Well, hot damn, we got ourselves another low float. Not that I know what the float actually is, but I know it's not going to be any higher than the outstanding share count, which is only 3.3 million. Financials for the company. Well, strange enough, they've got some revenues on the books at the end of their fiscal year, June of 2022. They had $192,000. Don't forget those three zeros here. And I have no clue what it was for. Ultimately, though, they ended up losing money in that year, $211,000. Now, looking at the quarterly, you can see there are no revenues. Because as I said, the company's based on assets. So what I did was looked up what they were doing month to month. Now, as you can see right there, May, June, July, they did about 75 coins at about $2.2 million. And that is using the Indiana facility at 5.3 megawatts. How much more do you think they're going to be able to do with 45 megawatts and 75 megawatts over there in Cheyenne, Wyoming? Whew, that could be very strong potential. Looking at the disclosures for the company, all these 6Ks have to do with their reporting, their results every single month, which I just showed you some pictures for, but I got my pictures elsewhere. And then we've got the news, which really is just everything we've been talking about. They're just telling us how much they're doing on a month-to-month -month basis. Nothing more than that. And they are growing, and they're getting a bigger facility, and they're going to be able to even grow faster. And I think the cryptocurrency market is going to grow as it is. So growth on top of growth. I don't know what Bitcoin's worth right now. Is it $30,000? Somewhere around there? So every coin they get is worth $30,000. Well, think of all the coins they've got. When Bitcoin hits 50,000, all of their coins are worth more. They're worth more. So as the crypto market grows, this company grows as well. Let's go take a look at that chart. What a wild chart for BTOG. This is a six month, four hour view. As you can see, there wasn't a whole lot going on here for a while, but right here in May, Things changed, and I really don't know why. A lot of volume came into the picture. Here on May 5th, she was at a low of six cents. Two days later, she hits this high of $3.24. Folks, I do believe that is somewhere near 50,000% gains, I think. 
She fell off of that, but not as far as you would think. She came down here to a dollar thirty, bounced off of that fifty-day SMA, launched herself up to about two seventy, and then fell back. And she hit the two hundred-day SMA yesterday afternoon when I caught it. Peaked in on it this morning. She looked like she was pushing up, and she was. She climbed strong all day, even after market. The volume is coming in right now, though it is very light, right? 116,000 is all we did today. But look at the days before. So today was a strong day, relatively speaking. Oscillators, all of them are strong. Every single one of them are pushing up, and our RSI is in the overbought right now, over 70. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So she wasn't doing much. She was hanging around the 50, and when she dipped, she was bouncing off of that 200 hull. Hit this low bubble, and once she climbed up on top of that 200 hull, that was it. Not one red bar on our hourly chart from this point two days ago until after market. Hitting a high of 219, pulling back, and still climbing. Osculators, wow. They are looking great. All of them are pushing up strong, and we are still in the overbought on our RSI. Five day, five minute. So we've bounced off of our low here. We got over our 50. You can see our bars got bigger when we got on top of that 50. And she is paying heed to the 20 day SMA. Up, down, and a bounce. Up, down, and a bounce. She is coming down right now. I would expect her to bounce off of the 20. Is it possible she comes lower? anything is possible, but she looks like she's riding the 20. I would count on it. Folks, I like this stock. One, cryptocurrency is probably going to keep climbing in value. Bitcoin is going to go up in value, and we know that can go way up. They've already got a bunch of coins, which are just going to grow in value. They've got one facility that is doing pretty well, about 20 coins a month. They're doing about $750,000 every three months just with that little facility. What are they going to do when they get into the one that's nine times bigger? Nine times more revenue? So I like BTOG. You should probably consider this one, folks. Not just a watch. I would consider getting into this one. That's just me. You do your own due diligence on all the stocks we covered. Don't let my due diligence be the end of yours. Let it be the beginning. I only share enough with you to get you interested. If you're interested, you owe it to yourself to do some more research. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya. <music>